Hello everyone, this is the second exercise video for the first lesson in the second book series. We're gonna do a bit more of the cast shadow exercises and some more value studies. So if you want to do them yourself, please check out the PDF file in the description. The first five or six exercises is about casting shadow. You will have the light and the origin of light direction. So you can do it like the ones before. And then we will do five groups of value study, uh, basic shapes, engineering shapes, architectural shapes, organic shapes, and finally real life examples. The final six or seven exercises are value painting with a fully detailed room with one character in simple values. You just have to add the values on the figure depending on the light direction in each different scenario. Just to show how the light direction change the mode of the story in your painting. And with that, let's start. So let's draw the cast shadow for a box with two light sources. First we find the fourth corner of the box and then connect the first light source base to all the corners and then connect the light direction from the first source to all the four corners. Connecting the dots will give us the first shadow of the first light. We do the same for the second light source and we will have the two cast shadows for the box. Now the two cast shadows won't add darker shadow to the box of course. It's the connection between them will result with the full cast shadow and each light source shadow that isn't connected to the other will be half value of the full cast shadow. So this was a simple one, let's do the next. Okay, the next one we have this uh, bar hanging on a wall with a slant on the bottom. So first we get the uh, shadow for the object itself. And for the points that doesn't have uh, a base point for it, we can just draw a line all the way to the ground and then get the shadow for that line. And then connect the origin light lines and the projection lines and we will get the shadow of the whole shape. For the line itself, we have to project the line to the platform it's set on top. And the end of it will have to project on the ground. So we will have two different origin lines to connect to the object. Then we connect the light projection lines to the end of the line and the intersection will be the points where the shadow connect. Of course the shadow of the line will go behind the wall so the point where it connects with the wall will also be the shadow connecting the base of the line to the beginning of the shadow. And on the end part the shadow will go all the way back to the slant and then we connect the two points together and we will get the shadow of the whole line. Okay, in this example we have a triangle hanging on the wall. So we do the same thing and project the triangle on the floor, all three points, and get the shadow for these three lines. Part of the shadow will connect behind the wall and in front of it. So where it connects with the wall, these two points will connect back to the origin of the shape of the triangle and we will have the shadow on the wall and the floor. Next shape we have three different rectangles with three different length and thickness hanging on a wall. Some of it will have the shadow only on the wall, some of it will have it on the wall and the floor and the third one will have it half on the wall and half on the floor. So we start with the first one projecting all the corners to the floor, getting the projection of the rectangle on the floor behind the wall and the front of it and then like we did before we connect the connection point on the front of the wall with the shadow and connecting it back to the original shape.
On the second one, we have the projection line on the floor and then we connect the light projection lines and as you can see the shadow will be all behind the wall which means nothing of the shadow will be on the floor now so now we have to connect the front of the shadow to the base of the shape and wherever that line intersect with the front of the wall will be the end of that shadow it may be a bit tricky to find where the connection line is you can just eyeball it to the place where it will hit the front of the wall and from that connect it back to the shape and you will have the shadow of the object We do the same with the third one and project the shape to the floor and get the shadow for these four lines. We will have the shadow half of it away from the wall and we do the same thing but we extend the front of the wall to hit the shadow on the floor and where these two intersect we draw these back to the base of the shape and we will have the shadow of the object. Now of course the rest of the shadow will be hidden by the wall itself so we have to get the shadow of the wall and, and we draw the final shadow as a union between the two shadows on the floor. we have different objects casting shadow on each other we start the same way get the first cast shadow in the front finding out the further away angle of the box and then cast the shadow on the wall now part of that shadow will be behind the second wall so we draw the shadow as it is first and then where that shadow connect with the wall we go up and they connect the shadow behind the wall to the top of the object itself and when it connects with the wall we will have the final shadow so basically the light projection lines will stop at the second wall so you don't have to do it this way every time you just can eyeball it right away from the top of the object to the second wall and draw the shadow vertically on the wall Now we do the same for the second wall and this time it will hit half the wall and the other half on the floor. So now we have to draw the whole shadow as it is, keep the part on the floor as it is and then make the other half vertically on the third box like we did with the second box. So we draw it vertically and connect it back to the object and when it hits the wall that's where the shadow will be.
As for the final box, the bottom level will be easy because it's just a box and the shadow will hit behind it on the floor but as for the box on top of it we can extend the object all the way to the floor and then get the shadow for it on two levels so the first level will be on top of the box and then it will cut and go vertically down but we, of course we're not gonna see it and then extend to the floor so if you get the shadow of the first object extended all the way to the floor you can now eyeball where the floor is and extend the projection origin of the light underneath it and then extend the projection line of the light on top and you will have the shadow on the floor and since this is a sunlight it will be all the same on the floor and on top of the first box The final example for the cast shadow we have this hollow box and we get the cast shadow the same way. First let's get the cast shadow for the whole box. First getting the far away angle and then connecting all the projection line to it. Now we will see if the opening will have the light coming all the way to the floor. So instead of seeing the cast shadow of the frame we will calculate the light projection inside the box. So we extend the line of the opening to the floor and then cast the light inside the box not the shadow because everything that the light isn't hitting will be shadow so this is the projection of the light inside the box and the rest of it will be all in shadow as in cast shadow of the top frame so as you can see the uh, light didn't hit all the way to the floor so the cast shadow will stay the same and simply this is the cast shadow of the hollow box and these are just few interesting examples i thought i do for this second exercise video but mostly I want to focus on the value painting for different objects because you need to do a lot of exercises on how to paint the 1, 2, 3 read values so we're gonna do that next before I start the examples I wanna show you the process of how I paint values so for example we have this object the first step will be calculating the normal surface of the object seeing where every part of the object is pointing at this is important to see where the light hit and the angle of the light hitting the object. If the normal surface of the object hit the light on an angle of 0 degree, it will be the brightest of the object. Once it's hit at 90 degree or higher, it will be in total shadow. And anything in between will be a variation of the values. Closer to the 0 degree will be bright and closer to the 19 degrees will be dark. The second step will be the cast shadow seeing where the object is casting shadow on itself and other parts of the object or on the floor. The third step will be the reflected light and how the object is receiving the light and casting it as a reflected light on different parts of the object. Even if the other part is in the shadow, will have some reflected light from the brightest part of the object. In the same way, we will have the reflected shadow from the floor back to the object. Finally, on the edges, we will have ambient occlusion. So any two closed objects will have ambient occlusion in between. And any edge facing the light will be a shiny edge, depending, of course, on the material and the shape of the edge itself. But of course, in nature, we don't have sharp edges. We always have a beveled edge. And the bevel edge will have a shiny reflection toward the light itself. It's just a way to make your object look a bit better. So with that said, let's start with the exercises. 
The first group of exercises will be different complicated basic shapes. Okay, for the first example, we will first calculate the surface normal for the object. We have this geosphere. So every face will be pointing at a different direction. And you have to look at the whole object as a basic sphere. Even though every face of it will have a different values, but the whole shape will have a spot where it's most highlighted and a, a part where it's in the shadow. So then we paint the values closer to the light in the brightest and away from the light as the darker. And we have to make every surface a bit different from the other. So it doesn't look all the same. That's the whole point of the 1, 2, 3 read method. It's to make every part of the object look different from the other. Because every part is absorbing a different amount of light than the other. So even though it has different shape, you can see every part of it have a different value. Even the same plane will have different value. So this was a quick one. Let's start with the second one. We have a cylinder with a hole in it. So basically we treat it as a cylinder. And as for the hole will be the opposite of the cylinder itself. So the part near the light will be in shadows due to the edge of the cylinder. And the part away from the light will be bright due to the light hitting the center of it. So the hole will be the opposite of the whole cylinder. The third shape will have different points and light and some of the object itself will cast shadow on itself. So the parts in the shadow will have different values than the part in the light. So even the face on the right will be bright, half of it will be under the cast shadow so it will be dark. But also don't forget the reflected light from the brightest part of the object toward the darkest part of the object. And also the top isn't the brightest thing because the angle of the light will hit the side wall uh, in a shallower angle than the top. And we will also have ambient occlusion on the edges between the faces. As we said, the ambient occlusion is the place where the two edges meet, where there is no place for the light to hit. For the next object, we have two cylinders in each other, so the object itself will cast shadow on itself on the side, and the brightest part will be the one facing the light the most. The next object we have a star, so part of the star will be casting shadow on itself. So knowing the direction of the light, you can tell where the cast shadow will be. And the brightest will be the part of the object where it's facing the light the most. And of course two facing objects will reflect light between them. And there will be an ambient occlusion in the middle. Now in this example, I put the light in between the objects, just for this example, to see how the light affects the objects in different ways. So all the parts of the object facing the light will be bright, and away from the light will be in dark. And of course the edges facing the light will be bright, and the edges facing away will be darker. In the second example, we put the light back on the top left and bring the objects together. 
So we will have reflected light, we will have cast shadow. So I start with the basic values of all the objects and then add the cast shadow next. This way I don't get confused with the cast shadow right away. So the cylinder will cast shadow on the box and the sphere will cast shadow on top of the box as well. Now let's start with the more complicated shapes. Now this first group, as I said, is the basic shapes. So let's try with glasses, mugs, and cups. We can treat them the same way. It's a bit of a cylinder with different shape in between, like a sphere and a cylinder, or a cylinder with a horn. So the basic shapes are the same. The more you can bring back the object to its basic shape, the easier it will be to paint the values on them. So all the introduction basic shapes we did will help you with more complicated shapes. Now that we see how the surface normal are, we can start doing the values. Don't be intimidated by the object shape, it's all different sizes of cylinders. As for the hole, as we said, the hole in the cup or the mugs are the opposite of the cylinder itself. Because the face of the cups are casting the shadow inside the cup or the mugs and the other part is reflecting the light directly. As for the handle, it's also a cylinder but, but bent in a certain way. So the side of the handle is facing the light more than the other side. So the other side will be in shadow, especially if the cup itself or the mug itself is cast in shadow on the handle. Now of course I'm not doing any materials here, so I'm not doing glass or anything like that. It's all the shape in uh, basic uh, stone-like material. We will get to the materials in later lessons. But as for now, we are just painting values on basic shape. Don't forget that the edge of the cup or the mugs are a beveled edge. So there will be highlights on top of all the mugs and the cups. You can spend as much time as you want on these, but uh, these are just basic lessons to try your hand. Don't take over 5 or 10 minutes on each one. And now in this uh, basic shapes group, we have a jar, a vase, and different shapes of cylinders. And on this simple uh, demonstration, the shapes itself are cylinders with holes in it, but the edge of it have uh, a beveled edge that will reflect the light more. And what I'm doing here is trying to understand the shape first before I start doing the values. So I'm just drawing these uh, form lines on top of them so that I will know how they will react under the light. So understand the shape first before you start the values. And now we can start. The first shape uh, have a different type of holes. It's not reflecting on the other side because the hole is way wider underneath it. It doesn't have like a shallow hole like the cup we see in the previous example. The hole in here go outward inside the jar. So there is no part that will reflect the light. All of it will be in the shadow. But in the second one we will have the hole in a shallow way going inwardly so it will reflect the light that will hit from the other half so not all the holes of this shape are the same it depends on the object itself that's why it's important to understand the shape first before you start adding the values and when you have the values painted you can just spend as much time as you want refining the edges and and the details in between the values
Okay, one more object in the basic shapes group. We are starting to get closer to what we want to understand from these lessons. How to draw the figure and the portrait. So this is basically a figure made of basic shapes. We have a cylinder, we have a sphere, we have a bug, but connected together they look like a figure. So when you are drawing your own figure drawing, it's easier to revert it to its basic shapes. And when you have the basic shape, you can simply just add values the way you add them to basic shapes. Instead of thinking of an arm or a head or a torso, you can think of a cylinder, a box and a sphere. So this is the first step of making use of these uh, exercises. Always start with the surface normal and understanding the shape itself, then the cast shadow, reflected light, ambient occlusion, and finally refining the edges. And this is the figure drawing painted in basic shape forms. And with this, we finish the first group of basic shape and values. The second group will be engineering shapes. These will have more complicated details to paint. So let's start. The first one in this group is a, a box with a slant and two, basically half a cylinder. So we first see where the surface normal are for every part of the object and where the cast shadow is hitting and then start adding the values. For all these value exercises, the sunlight will be from the top left. So if you want to do this yourself, all of them will be from the top left. So basically we do the same thing we did in the previous lesson and add the values according to the direction of the light. There won't be much uh, commentary on this. Hopefully you did these exercises yourself and you are just checking the answers on these lessons. Just make sure you follow the four steps we talked about. Uh, check the surface normal, the cast shadow, the reflected light, the ambient occlusion edges and the highlighted edges. For the second one we have a hole but it's a vertical hole. So the top edge will be casting shadow on the inner edge. So the top edge of the outer hole will cast a shadow on the inner hole. And the bottom of the hole will be reflecting the light. So just think of it as a horizontal hole and a step to the side. So the same concept rotated 19 degrees.
In this shape you have a hole that the light will go through all the way to the bottom part. But the two holes in the front and the back will occlude some of the sunlight to get in. So the top part of the first hole will prevent some of the light to get in and the bottom part of the second hole in the back will prevent the light from the bottom. So the opening of the two holes will be uh, an ellipse of light casted on the back part of this object. If you are having trouble with holes casting shadows, think of them as two different objects, two different slides and see how the light hit the first one and then calculate the light hitting the second one. And this will give you the resulted light from both ends of the hole. Now these shapes are getting more complicated as we go further. 
Don't be intimidated by these complicated shapes. Think of them as basic shapes on top of each other. Take your time while you're doing these exercises. Think of them as problem solving exercises. The whole session took about 15 to 16 hours. So these are sped up videos, not the real time. Take your time while you're doing these exercises. You always see where the light hit first and what is casting the shadows and so on. Most complicated objects are always made of basic shapes. And that's the whole point of these lessons. So when you get to drawing the figure or painting the figure or the portraits, they are basically simple shapes put on top of each other. The last one in this group is an airplane with four wings. Same concept as before, think of the surface normal and the cast shadow and start painting.
And now we are done with the engineering shapes, let's try some architectural shapes. These are the closest thing to buildings or interior shapes.
Okay, now let's try some organic shape. These shapes have no hard edges. They are mostly smooth organic shape. And with this we are getting closer to the human portrait or figure drawing. So in these shapes, remember, there are no hard edges. Everything will be smooth in these shapes. The final group of four objects will be real life examples. So we're gonna start with a toy, and then a car, and then the planes of the head, then the skull, and finally the portrait. Remember, these are quick examples. I'm taking about five to 10 minutes each, even with these complicated shapes, because I just want to try my hand with these exercises. These should be everyday exercises, just a warm up before you even start your daily session of painting so don't worry about final details in these exercises just keep rotating the light source add more light sources in it make sure you are solving the problem of the light and the shadows and once you do that move on to the next don't keep working on the final details these are just for you not to show anyone else and i did in this session about 60 to 70 examples in 14 or 15 hours so just make sure you are solving the problem, not focusing on the details.
So after doing all these exercises, uh, painting the head won't be as hard as it was before. It's just basic planes with different surface normal. So don't let this intimidate you anymore after doing all these exercises. And hopefully this is the point of these uh, exercises, is to do as much as you can so you understand the physical way that shapes react to the light in every single position. Whether it's curved, it's smooth, it's hard edged, away from the light or in the light, you should do as much as possible so you get the hang of it, so that it gets easier as you do more of it. Now as for these uh, planes of the head, the planes that are in the shadow have two types. The planes that are facing the sky and the planes that are facing the floor. The planes that are facing the sky are abstracted from the light by the object itself. But the planes that are facing the floor have some light reflected from the floor on these planes. So they will have a lighter value to the object facing the sky. Now if the sky light is brighter, they will have more light reflected on them.
and finally now we paint the portrait of the male and then the female with all the knowledge we had in the previous lessons again I'm not trying to fully detail the portrait I'm just giving 10 to 15 minutes to solve the problem of light and shadow And with that we are done with the value study We still have one fun exercise to do before we end this video We did before the same thing but with a box So let's do something more complicated with a figure So this is the figure in basic values Without any details In a fully detailed room But with different lighting in each scenario I just want to to show you how the mood of the story depends on the light direction and every time you change the light direction it will change the mood of the painting itself so try your hand doing these values yourself don't worry about fully detailing the object just follow the light direction where is the primary light coming from where is the reflected light coming from and where the shadow direction will be so this is uh, Again, as I said before, uh, an introduction to how we're going to do concept art in different lighting scenarios and how we're going to change the tone and the mood of the story depending on the light direction, colors, composition, and so on.
And as you can see, even with the same person, the same room, the same objects, just by changing the light itself, you get six different stories to tell. Either a horror story, a good story, an action story, just by changing the light source itself. So this is a great tool for you to create more ideas and more art that fits your narrative and the art of storytelling. And we're gonna do much more on that later on. And with that, we are done with this exercise video. This is not the second lesson of the uh, second book. It's just an extension to the exercise video that I posted a month ago. These videos for the second book are gonna take much longer to do as I mentioned before. But I want to do more and more exercises just to make sure the concept lesson is understood and applied in these exercises. And with that, we come to the end of this video. Before I go, I'd like to thank my Patreons who donated to my channel. If you'd like to donate to my channel, please go to patreon.com slash rainwalker. Thank you all for your generosity. And this is it for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.